St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the Bishop of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, the Most Reverend Richard Greco. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from a parishioner of Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Pembroke, Ontario. This Mass is offered for her family, living and deceased, and in thanksgiving for many blessings received. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking you in Pembroke, Ontario, for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin and ask God for mercy. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father, by your Spirit, you raised up St. Teresa of Avila to show your Church the way to perfection. May her inspired teaching awaken in us a longing for true holiness. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. God is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, Abraham believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. The word of the Lord. Commanded for a thousand generations. 
and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God and everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, before the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. The advertising industry knows something about human nature that keeps its profits high. And what it knows is this, that promises Promises are the stuff of human relationships. Cosmetic companies that produce skin moisturizers promise middle-aged women intimacy and youthfulness. Running shoe companies promise athletic skills and speed and agility. Exercise gadgets promise health and beauty. The advertising industry knows that promises are much more than just a technique to sell products. They know that the right promises can offer what people are really longing for, intimacy, vitality, success, and security. We all need vitality. We all need intimacy. We all need success, and we all need security. The multi-billion dollar advertising industry would have us believe that these basic human needs can be satisfied if only we would, you know, buy their products. Eventually, most of us grow wise enough to know that the longing of our hearts cannot be satisfied by means of a product. Products don't satisfy the heart. Product consumption just makes us bigger consumers. But for a while, the promises of the advertising industry succeed because they know a very important fact of life, that promises are the foundation of human relationships. For example, parents, without even knowing it perhaps, base their whole relationship to their newborn on promises. They promise to feed, to house, to clothe, to educate, to guide, and to love the child. They promise to give this child what she needs in life. Married couples 
begin their lives together based on a promise to love and honor each other faithfully for life. Their whole future is shaped on fidelity to those promises. And all our social institutions, the social institutions of our society, in some way offer us promises or they would not exist. The police promise to serve and protect. Politicians are certainly known for their promises. Business deals are based on promises that are formulated with a contract. Our legal system promises us justice. Our medical system promises to heal the sick and to care for the dying. The hierarchical church promises to guide the faithful in matters of the gospel. The promises of today, the ones we make and the ones we receive, are the very stuff which moves us into tomorrow. And this is true not only of our personal relationships, but of the network of relationships through all the institutions of our society. As soon as individuals or institutions fail to live up to their promises, then the quality of relationships starts to deteriorate and the prospects for the future grow dark. Now, I mention all of this because our God is a God of promise and promises. In fact, in the Bible, God never, ever, ever speaks without making some kind of promise from the first page of the book of Genesis to the last page of the book of Revelation. In today's reading, God promised Abraham descendants as many as the stars. Paul explains the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Abraham believed the promise of God, and as St. Paul tells us in that same reading, hoping against hope, Abraham believed that he would become the father of many nations. In the Bible, God always relates to his children with promises. God promised Moses a land flowing with milk and honey, and through the prophets, God promised the world a Messiah, a Savior. And when Jesus the Savior was born, he promised that merciful people shall find mercy, that people who are fair shall find justice, that peacemakers shall find peace, that the distressed will find comfort, and the greatest of his promises that those who believe in him shall inherit eternal life. What is our response to the God of promise? Our response in prayer and in action is to be a trusting kind of person like Abraham. No matter how often our trust has been betrayed by others, we strive to trust in God, no matter how difficult or perilous the road ahead may seem. We journey through life empowered by the hope that Jesus' promises are not empty. We live our lives believing that God's promises in Christ will be fulfilled. Let us now offer our prayers <clears throat> to Almighty God. Loving and gracious God, listen to the prayers of your people as we place all our trust in you. That our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, bishops, priests, and deacons may always fulfill their responsibilities as humble servant leaders, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples seek justice and find peace, we pray. Lord, that those who care for the suffering, especially health care workers, see Christ in each person they serve, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord that Catholic teachers and parents may teach their children compassion and forgiveness in word and in deed, we pray. Lord, that we who gather around the Lord's table bring Christ's love to the world, we pray. Lord, that those who have died hoping in your promise of eternal life may take their place in the communion of saints in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord we offer these prayers with confidence in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. this water and wine we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. King of heaven, accept the gifts we offer in your praise as you were pleased with St. Teresa's offering of her life in your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Amen. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the word through whom you made the universe, the savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and he won for you a holy people. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory as we pray. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it, 
This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone through their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share some sign of the Lord's peace.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the sick? O oh my God, give me the grace of patience in my suffering and of submission to your holy will. I offer this illness in reparation for my sins and for the sins of the world. I unite myself with the bitter sufferings and death of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, watch over the family you nourish with the bread from heaven. Help us to follow St. Teresa's example and sing your merciful love forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Our thanks to a parishioner from Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Pembroke, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Grace